Have you ever gone swimming and had something go up your urethra? Hopefully not, and in many places that's a rare occurrence, but it can happen. That something is usually a parasite of some sort, but parasites enter your body any number of ways, through your nose, through what you eat, open wounds, really any opening can invite something pretty unpleasant. And while they aren't always visible to the naked eye, they are still considerably larger than other pathogens like viruses and bacteria. So that raises the question, how do we fight these creatures when they invade our body? Well, fortunately, our body comes equipped with a series of cells. I suppose, well, it's a bit of an understatement, but more specifically, there are cells called granulocytes. They're part of your immune system and they specialize in dealing with proportionately gigantic invaders, like knights fighting dragons or vicious flying rabbits. Oh, no. oh. Okay, maybe not that latter one, but either way, these granulocytes are specialized types of immune cells, especially one called an eosinophil. These eosinophils are found in high amount in specific areas of the body. Can you guess where? Based on what you know up to now about parasites. If you said something along the lines of all the sites of entry, well, you'd be right. Eosinophils are found in great number in the stomach, the intestines, the genitals, the uterus, lungs, and really any other area of potential entry. Essentially, these cells sit and wait, much like a trap, for any pathogen that might think it's a good idea to swim into the deeper recesses of your murderous soul. Okay, whoops. <laughs> I'm projecting a little bit, but I meant to say that they wait for anything that shouldn't be in your body, and then they pounce. So as the pathogen is coated in antibodies, this increases the recognition of the pathogen as something other, something foreign, and the eosinophils migrate from their location to get closer to the invader. Once close, they anchor onto the surface of the pathogen through specialized receptors that bind the antibodies that are stuck on the eosinophils latch on and begin secreting death unto the enemy in the form of vesicles, once dormant within the immune cell, now released into the open, unleashing their contents made up of destructive enzymes, oxidant molecules, and generally destructive granules. And this is called degranulation. This efflux of destruction from the cell leads to substantial damage to the parasite or other invader. However, the battle doesn't end there because assuming the release of these toxins doesn't quite cut it, eosinophils also release recruitment factors. These factors, molecules, will attract other immune cells to the region of battle. If that were more eosinophils, other granulocytes, or immune cells of different classes, reinforcements are on their way. So, in a well-coordinated immunological surprise attack, the eosinophils defend you from some of the nastiest parasitic invaders. But, unfortunately, this potent system can also backfire. Have you ever had stomach problems, irritable bowel syndrome? Although this isn't all-encompassing, there are genetic reasons for the onset of irritable bowel syndrome. And some other allergic gastrointestinal diseases. Normally, your intestinal tract, especially the large intestine, is made up of epithelial cells that squeeze together to form a barrier between the blood system and the remaining food molecules left over after the small intestine has removed what it can to feed the body. So between that layer of epithelial cells is mucus, a dense barrier and a loose barrier. These barriers are partially in place to restrict the access of things like bacteria and other pathogens from accessing the epithelial cells. 
However, in some with irritable bowel syndrome, there is a reduced amount of this mucus, allowing more pathogens or generally foreign substances from interacting with the epithelial layer. This really aggravates, in a cellular sense, the defensive eosinophils, leading to a reaction that entails some of what we described earlier, the release of toxic substances, but also the activation of other immune cells in the area. Ultimately, the eosinophils may prematurely and sometimes correctly identify a threat and lead to increased inflammation, which also triggers sensory neurons to feed back pain to the brain. That rhymed. All in all, eosinophils are ever watchful, like the manning of forts at the entrances to the body, ambushing the unwanted, and often doing a service to you, but sometimes becoming overzealous and having unwanted consequences like exacerbating allergic reactions, stomach syndromes, and much more. So while they are crucial, they have their granules in many processes far beyond those discussed here, but one way or another, they're really impressive cells of our body. I hope you agree. Mm -hmm.